So there we have it, using a microcontroller to draw a math function on an oscilloscope. That's lots of fun. Hi, I'm Monte, and welcome to the next exciting episode of Coke and Strippers, where you always get the full Monte. Anyway, today we are going to put this on this using this. One quick way to generate waveforms to display on the oscilloscope is to use something like this uh, DDS signal generator. This is the way we're normally looking at a signal on an oscilloscope. This is a sine wave generated by my signal generator. Um, one kilohertz, it doesn't really matter. On the y-axis, we're used to seeing amplitude. And the x-axis is time, so over time the signal changes. Now most of these scopes have at least two channels. And I set up a second signal on the second channel, another sine wave. Again, amplitude in the y direction, time in the x direction. Uh, if we move this up, we'll see that actually the second signal I set up to be 90 degrees out of phase. That'll be more important in just a moment. Uh, again, so normally amplitude, time. But these scopes have a different mode called an XY mode where we use the Y axis to be the amplitude of one signal and the X axis to be the amplitude of the other signal. So now we can steer this beam around uh, around the screen to draw things instead of uh, tracing them through time. And if I hit the XY switch, look, these two sine waves on 90 degrees out of phase uh, generates a nice circle. And that's the basis of of the way we're going to be able to draw more complicated um, patterns on here than what we can generate with simple waveforms from a, a, a digital uh, wave synthesizer. From my point of view, engineering is all about knowing what your tolerances are. And for a lot of projects, it's just math. You have to sit down and calculate it and figure it out. But for a lot of projects, there's a faster way. And I think we'll take that approach this time. Their faster approach is based upon three things. Number one, rough estimates. Number two, experience with similar kinds of projects. And number three, being willing to use a larger hammer. For a lot of projects, I will grab something like an Arduino. These are like five bucks from China in bulk and they work most of the time. One of the limitations of this Arduino is that it only has a digital output. So assume this is five volts and this is time in this direction, we can set something that will go five volts or zero volts, five volts or zero volts over time. And while we could use something like that, what we really want to be able to do is to set arbitrary values somewhere in here to create different waveforms. So much for the rough estimation of this project. Uh, so when I need to hit it with a larger hammer, I often reach for a, a teensy. These are, um, much faster processors, a little more expensive. Uh, Paul Stoffergen, I hope I pronounced his last name right, uh, makes a really nice chip. When I need more power, I generally go to one of these. They are, um, as a, the uh, teens, the um, Unos are like 16 megahertz. These are 180 megahertz. Uh, Teensies have 2K RAM. This has 192K RAM. And more importantly, this has two DACs. So, who knows what a DAC is? Ask me, ask me, 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 right here, right here, this guy. I know, I know, ask me, ask me, ask me. Okay, so a DAC is a digital to analog converter. So now if we look at a, a graph of voltage over time, we say this is five volts, or actually I wanna say this is 3.3 volts uh, because these run at 3.3 volts. Uh, instead of just being able to turn a pin all the way off or on, these DAC pins, I can set the voltage at a particular level. I can set it here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here, or here. Now you can see how we can generate more arbitrary waves uh, by being able to set them at different values up and down. So we end up with a wave that might look like this. Uh, in particular, the two DACs on here are 12-bit DACs. That means we could set them between values of 0 and 4095. Uh, and they have about a 20 microsecond settling time, more or less. All right, so let's take a little bit of a look at the code. Here's where we set up arrays to hold the X and Y points, a uh, maximum of 10,000 in this case. We have some memory, uh, 192K, but that's not a lot. 
Remember, we only need 12 bits for the DAC. That's all it can use. Uh, integers are normally 32 bits here, so we want to set these as 16 bits. Set up a couple more variables we need. Pi being one of them. Well, in, actually, in actuality, this is a constant. Uh, we're setting outputs to those DACs, uh, creating them as output pins and the LED just so we can blink it. The main loop, the only real thing that's going on is it sets the X and Y values and sends them out to the DAC and then it loops and it just keeps putting out those points that will move uh, the point around on the oscilloscope for us. All we really need on here are three pins um, and I started, soldered on uh, these to make it easier to hook to the scope. What we're looking for are, and if you go to the chart, you can find this online. Uh, these usually ship with these uh, teensies. There are several different models. Uh, this is a 3.5. Um, I, I like it. 3.6 is fine. Um, we have DAC 0, uh, DAC 1, and ground. And we need our ground as our reference point. So here's our, uh, try to get the same orientation, uh, DAC 0, DAC 1, and ground. All right, back to the scope. Let's hook the Teensy up. We got a couple of scope probes. We're gonna put ground on the ground. And one channel there. For the other probe, we're gonna double up on the ground. It also needs ground. And it's gonna go there. Then we need to add a little power. So where's my power connector oh it's right uh, here and now look up here for this LED this thing takes a, a second or so to boot but remember I'm not turning this LED on until after the calculations are done so thousand one two three four five so it took a few seconds for that LED to come on so that's how long it actually took to make all the calculations for the X and the Y for all the points that we chose uh, to store. If we look up here, look, we see two waveforms already. Let's just look at one to start out with. Um, we'll change our time a little bit and see what this waveform looks like. So that's what, that is what one of the waveforms looks like. Um, it's smooth here, or a lot smoother. I know it's kind of glitchy, uh, on the camera screen, but it looks rather smooth here. Uh, so that's one waveform. And let's see what the other one looks like. And the other one looks like that. And so now the question is, what do they look like when we put them together? Hopefully, well, that's what they look like over top of each other. So let's go to the XY mode and looky there. There we have it. That looks kind of nice. That looks kind of nice, even if I say so myself. We can uh, position it a little bit. Is that as big as... Yeah, that'd be too big to fit on the screen. So there we go. There is your heart. Now, the same principle can be used to display any figures on these scopes. You've seen occasionally people do clocks or, or other things back in the day. But I thought we would have fun with it. So there we have it. Using a microcontroller to draw a math function on an oscilloscope. That's lots of fun. Not anything new. We've been doing this for a long time, but it's lots of fun. And if you haven't done it before, you might want to try it out. I hope you had fun with today's project. Write a comment below. If you liked it, share it with a friend. If you didn't like it, share it with an enemy. And don't forget to spend all your money on Coke and strippers. But let's change to XY mode. And what do we get? Oh, look at that. Would you look at that? All right, let's let's... Uh, can I center this thing up a little bit? There we go. Uh, and make the voltages a little bigger. Oh, would you look at that? Is that pretty? That is pretty right there. There we go.